Hi, sweet friend. Welcome to Watercolor Cocktail Hour. My name is Volta. I'm the artist behind Color Snack. And um, I'm Daniel, and this the is person the behind Volta. Look I'm looking this at this thing. thing. No. <laughs> this is Daniel, my, my husband, also known as Dan. Yes. Uh, to a lot of people, uh, but he is the mixologist of this show. So today I'm, I'm excited to share that uh, we'll be making a mocktail because of dry January and why not? It was a fun challenge. I was like, Dan, make a fun drink, but make it into a mocktail. And you came up with a really great one. Yeah, yeah. And sure, I am totally doing dry January, <laughs> even though my birthday is this month. Yes. Yeah. We are totally. not. But and the college are, football championship. Let's yeah. not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so we're doing a dark and stormy. Yes. Uh, dark share. and stormy. A uh, technically a mule because it's made with ginger beer and some type of liquor over ice. Uh, it is the unofficial national drink of Bermuda. Uh, and it is one of the few trademark cocktails, if and I believe, so somebody out there research this, I believe the trademark cocktails, if you call it a dark in, with the letter in stormy. Mm. I don't know which oh, way that goes. Okay. Yeah, so you can say a dark, again, not a lawyer, I'm not sure if this is the right thing. Okay. I couldn't figure this out, but I believe a dark and stormy uh -huh. is the cocktail. A dark in stormy is the uh, one that's owned by Gosling oh, themselves. Okay. So, yeah, so, and, so an official dark in stormy uh -huh. uh, is made with Gosling's ginger beer and lime. Uh, Gosling's has a lot of a, uh, a molasses flavor to it, uh, this black seal rum. It, it's a polarizing taste. I'm not a huge fan of molasses. I find it to be kind of vegetable, vegetal, and mm -hmm. not very, uh, not, not as sweet as it should. Maybe I just haven't had good molasses. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it just doesn't do it for me. On top of that, ginger beer, I'm a kind of a traditional American in that sense, in that I want my ginger beer to taste like spicy ginger ale, as opposed to, you know, what ginger beer is actually supposed to taste like, which isn't that sweet. It's also kind of well, gingery, vegetal. So what we made was a variation of a dark and stormy as a mocktail, which uh, is more like a sweetened, Ginger beer, mm -hmm. but still kind of has that dark and stormy effect. And it's very delicious. We call it a stark and dormy. Stark and dormy. Oh my gosh, I should have named it stark and dormy. Yeah. And when I do, when I do make a, a, a dark and stormy, mm -hmm. I, I like them, but I like to use just a dark overproof rum as opposed to a black seal rum. And uh, doing mocktails like this, I've talked about this before on some of the streams, it's a great way to kind of develop your palate. And your palate is driven largely by your nose and what you can smell. So you just take the rum that you ordinarily would use or, you know, go to a friend's house and smell theirs or <laughs> if you aren't a drinker so you don't have it around and start trying to pick out those scents. Uh, all rum is going to have brown sugar flavor to it. It's just a natural thing. And we're just going to start developing a syrup. So any syrup at its base, equal parts by weight, sugar and water. And sugar and water, fortunately, is one gram per milliliter. So we are going to add however many grams of brown sugar we want to use. I'm going to go with roughly two ounces. That would be specifically 56 grams, but it's a lot easier to do it by uh, 60 grams because the math's better. I'm going to take that, put that over here. I've already measured out the liquid. 
So it's still liquid? Um, is that just that's water? Just water. Okay. That's just water. Mm -hmm. And then we're just going to splash whatever it is that we have laying around mm -hmm. that we pick up in the alcohol of choice. Uh, definitely going to do vanilla, especially if you can get barrel aged vanilla. Uh, although if you are... Barrel uh, aged? That sounds... Where do people find barrel aged vanilla? Most stores, believe oh, okay. it or not, okay. it's, it's it barrel aged fancy. vanilla extract. Yeah, but it'll pick up all that, that all woodsiness, right. that, yeah. that, that type of like, you know, that, it, it will taste like a bourbon or a rum. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, people get, people get all kinds of extra with their vanilla yeah. extracts and all that stuff. Uh, but no, I was saying that uh, there is technically a little bit of alcohol in vanilla extract. So, oh, yeah. Uh, Odds are, if you are somebody that's sensitive or to alcohol for allergies or for religious reasons, you're probably using the non-alcoholic or alcohol-free vanilla extract, but just in case. You know, I didn't know vanilla had a little bit of alcohol in it. Yeah. And then I'm going to use some of the maraschino syrup that's so delicious, uh, just because I picked up a little bit of Cherry. Yeah, what if people don't have maraschino? What could they? Oh, uh, you could get away with uh, like, like cherry regular juice. cherry juice, cherry jam. Cherry jam. Uh, mm -hmm. You could also do uh, probably grenadine, mm -hmm. even though that's uh, pomegranate and not cherry, but it'll still work. Okay. Yeah, there's no rules. We're all just riffing here. Yeah. Uh, another big one that you'll see maple syrup. So we're trying to get that that woodsiness that that. I guess tree-ness, oakiness, and maple syrup is often something that you'll see people pick out in rums. Mm -hmm. uh, I should also add, yeah. for lack of any other uh, reason, if you if you do like molasses, you can make a dark and stormy mocktail by just making a molasses syrup. Oh yeah. And adding maybe a little vanilla to How it. How does one then, make a molasses? Uh, no it would probably be like a honey syrup. So okay. you would do two parts molasses, one part uh, water, mm -hmm. and then heat it up until. Oh, can you get my uh, my zester? Yes. This one, right? Yep. So uh, some type of citrus. You're gonna want orange peel. We have a tangerine that's about to go bad, so it works. So we're just gonna zest some of that into the syrup. That's part of what making a mocktail is. You know, you got to go a little extra. You got to go mm -hmm. above and beyond. Because otherwise, it's just like a soda, something like that. Gotta, gotta no, this is a fancy it. soda. Yeah. This is like a leveled up soda. Leveled up, exactly. Oh, and last but not least, dark chocolate is a scent you're always going to pick up in a really good room. Yeah, can you hand this to me? This. Well, unless you have a cheesecloth that you can pass this through, you're going to get a little bit of a uh, cocoa powder at the top of your drink, but it's not a big deal. I guess if you had like cocoa nibs or something like that, you'd probably get that chocolate flavor without going to too much trouble. But that's all right. The taste is worth it. And so now we're just going to microwave that. Easy stuff. High tech. Yeah. We have a we have them right here. We're not going to be in trouble of doing it. Oh, we're back, I think. We're back. We're back. Hey. Laura, the, the, the memo on, on my... Uh, sorry, I wasn't here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So how long are you microwaving it for? Uh, until it boils. Okay. So you're just boil, cooking it just long enough to get that going. And while it's still hot, I am going to take... Oh, it smells so good. I'm going to take just a little like, bit of balsamic vinegar. Yeah. And again, the secret this is, ingredient. Yeah, this is, this is cheating, but uh, alcohol always has this kind of like effervescent uh, drying effect. 
on your palate and it is a little acidic. So we cheat and we add a little bit of acidic and also barrel aged. We need a glass, right? Well, some, yeah, that is probably something that I need. <laughs> it's been a few weeks some since ice. we've done this. Yes, and I'm going to actually add just a few cubes of ice to this. Start out with, cool that down really quickly. There we go. Okay, yes. So now that smells nice and rummy. Mm -hmm. I do, I do prefer this, this to actual rum because <laughs> it has like almost, uh, well, it's got cocoa and I love anything chocolate. So it definitely has like that yes. subtle chocolate to me. It kind of has like a, like a roasted marshmallow. Yeah. I don't know how this happens, but... No. Uh, and with a dark and swarmy, you want separation. So if you have crushed ice, use crushed ice. Uh, but we're going to use small cubed ice from a refrigerator as opposed to using that big kind of dramatic ice cube. Uh, we don't want it. We want lots of ice in this because it helps kind of keep things separated. Mm -hmm. And now we're just going to stack up our drink. What goes in first, the ginger beer or the the fake rum? <laughs> you the fake well in traditionally. I traditionally, think. you would put in you would float the rum mm -hmm. on top because mm -hmm. it's like stormy, dark skies yeah. above a sunset. Okay. But in our case, this actually sinks on top of the. Yeah. Uh, the ginger it's beer, heavier. it's a little heavier, so we're just going to uh, pour that over the ice. Plus, it also helps cool down the syrup if you're like us and lazy. So we're just going to do that to taste. Take our lime. We used wedges. We didn't use wedges. Well, we used wedges. Slice. We used slice. Like, yeah, remember? Okay. I just want to make sure I get it right. And that's half circles. Want to keep, want to stay consistent. Yes, got to match the painting, which we'll be doing afterwards. Yeah, I guess we didn't even. I guess if talk someone is new concept. here, um, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, so the first part of this show is Dan making the cocktail, and then the second part is me painting the cocktail. So I'm excited. Oh, also want to give a shout out. To oh, the strong water folks. Strong water because I actually won a whole little case of these little guys in a giveaway. And oh my god, it's such delicious ginger beer. And the tonics were also really good. So highly recommend strong water. Yeah, strong water. So I guess uh, we'll be making a mocktail to our next week with their tonic. I bring it up to the camera. Yes, I will do that in just a second. <laughs> There we go. So we're pouring that. Oh, look at that. Look at that separation with the strong water. So it's like a dark and stormy, but reversed. Yeah. Stark and dormy. Stark and dormy. Yeah. Need to place that. Boy, we are out of practice. It's been a couple, it's been a couple months, it's hasn't it? It's been a couple months. <laughs> yeah, we just got so busy. How are we neglecting the sweet friends during know, the cocktail hour? We're back now. Yes. And now I'm just going to finish things off with a nice little garnish skewer. Get in there. Well, at least these aren't sharp, so even if I did poke myself with them, it wouldn't hurt. Unfortunately, that does not allow me to. I'm going to go ahead and try it. <laughs> well, it needs to be stirred up. It's just going to taste like ginger beer right now. Ah, oh, which is very good. Yes. Right there. Look at that. Doesn't it look just like the painting? Wow. Wow. So pretty. I love it. It's already like a, a watercolor. It has like mm. that gradient. It's so, so nice. Both of those, anything ombre. Yes. Because it's, it's like watercolor in real life. What could be better? Yes. I guess maybe having a drink. Yes, or a hey, mocktail drink. Yeah. And then so you can just stir it up with your little doodad and there you go. And now you have 
all the fun of a dark and stormy with none of the consequences. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, it's so good. It's so refreshing. Mm -hmm. And, but it has like that certain, mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't want to call it umami because that's not the <laughs> right word, but, <laughs> but it's just like a subtle, like, yeah, there's a there's a syrupiness to so it. It yeah. has that uh, that like complexity. Molasses, but not, yeah, yeah, yeah the, the complexity mm -hmm. of a cocktail mm -hmm. while not having any of the alcohol. Yes, yeah. That's what you want in a mocktail. Yeah, it's very special. Definitely not just like a oh, here's a soda. Here's mm -hmm. a soda for you if you're not drinking alcohol. But this is like a special one. Yeah, it makes you you know feel like. You're doing something different. Yeah, you're, 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 celebratory. You're doing a cocktail, and it's effectively the same amount of. It, it's actually probably lower calorie than a dark and stormy, because oh. alcohol is pretty caloric. Yeah, I always forget that part. Yeah. All right, mm, so let's taste it. All right, well, cheers, folks. Can you, Thank uh, you. Uh, uh, drag one? Yes, it is dragging the things. Mm. Victoria, uh, I'm sorry, Victoria, I'm going to mess up your last name. Uh, Kukla. Kukla. Oh, well, the nose in the last yeah. name. Kukla. Victoria Kukla says, She's looks delicious. Friend. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you so much for joining. All right, so we're going to paint this. I don't think people need to see the kitchen on there. Can I close this one view? Yeah, can you bring the microphone probably closer to me? I just remove it from stream. Yeah, you can remove it. I have to add it to stream so that they can have the microphone because the microphone's oh, a part of that that's stream. That's true. Okay, sorry guys, we are a little rusty on our set. So. Oh, it's also, we're trying something different with we stream are. base. We are. Um, all right, so hopefully you guys can hear me. If anyone says they cannot, will you watch for that, Dan? Yes, and I'll just stand here all and right. they can watch me clean. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this is going to be a very simple one to get us started uh, with this cocktail. So if you take a look at my drawing here, it's um, composed of two parallel lines, and then there's a couple of kind of curved, curvy lines that connect these. So I'm going to start with just kind of roughly sketching two lines for the glass. And then I'm going to connect them here at the bottom. And then I'm gonna do one more that's gonna be parallel to this curve, just so that we can show the glass portion of this. Kind of like this. And then here at the top, you'll see this shape is kind of, um, kind of like an oval shape, so it's not, it's a little bit, it's a little bit more curved than the lines at the bottom. So I'm just gonna kind of pretend that I'm sketching a little oval shape here. There we go. All right, so we're pretty much almost done. I mean, wow, it's such a fast, such a fast, a very, very simple cocktail illustration. It'd also be a pretty fast cocktail if I could shut my mouth. <laughs> no. if, you're, if you're not telling the entire story of a dark and stormy, <laughs> you can make this in a minute. But you, but you know, like people want to know the, maybe the background of the cocktail and why is it called dark and stormy? Like I didn't mm. necessarily know it was about the cloudiness of the drink or like what, how it looks well, like. It's, it's apocrypha. They say some old sailor named it this, but I think just Gosling's uh. decided to make the story. Also, it's funny, uh, so Gosling's Black Seal Rum, it used to be named, It was. it's called Black Seal Rum because it was sealed with a black wax seal, uh -huh. like Maker's Mark has a red seal on the top. Uh, I guess the wax got too expensive, so Gosling's was like, you know what we're gonna do? We're we're gonna put a black seal 
Oh my God, it's a real seal. We're going to put a black seal on it <laughs> and call it Black Seal Run. Okay. <laughs> the points that's for kinda, creativity. That's yeah. kind of clever. I love it. It's I've never so painted cool. a watercolor seal. Now I feel like I should. Yeah, seal okay. on a seal. Seal on a seal. All right, but back to this <laughs> uh, painting. Uh, so for the garnish, I just did like a little circle for the cherry and then a half circle, like a, a little bit larger for the uh, lime slice. And then there's just like a little other like half of a semicircle slap, a curve just to show a little bit of um, the wedge on the lime. Totally optional, but it helps to kind of like make it a little bit more dimensional. Uh, and then the last thing we'll add is just going to kind of do a couple of little square shapes to show the ice cubes inside. So I'm just going to do like maybe three. Yeah, I think I'll leave it at that because um, we'll see as, as you notice the, in this particular drink. So the dark and stormy traditionally is darker at the top, lighter at the bottom. But in our case, since it's a mocktail, it's going to be the reverse. So I'm going to grab my watercolors now. All right, so for, actually, before we get started, I'm going to add, so I'm using my watercolor, my water brushes, my water brush pens, and I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of water on my towel just so that I have some water on the bristles. And actually, I might even add one or two droplets in this area here at the bottom. So I'm just painting with water right now. And the reason is that when we do that, it allows for the colors to spread in a much more kind of playful and watercolory way, like kind of like you see here. So I'm gonna grab my colors. So I'm gonna use kind of like a dark brown for my palette. If you have any any brown that kind of looks like a chocolatey, uh, and you can, by the way, always add, if you have like a, a little bit of purple mixed in with brown, makes it like extra kind of like chocolatey looking. So I'm going to use this. And because I added some water here, as soon as I'm dropping some color, it's going to start to spread out into the rest of the shape. So that allows me to kind of have this very nice and soft. So I'm just, just using the, the bristles on my brush to kind of move, move this around. So it creates a very soft transition. And I want the bottom to be more saturated. So I'll just, just drop in more color. So just add more of that brown because naturally it's going to spread out and gonna, going to become lighter, but I want this portion to be darker. All right. Do we have any comments? We're good? No. Okay. I'm still just so yeah. amazed by how you can keep the edge on those ice cubes in the bottom. Oh, the edge? Oh, so, over. Yeah, so I I just painted with water around the the ice cubes. And because I'm not touching that area, it's kind of protected because that this area is dry, so the water is not getting in there. But I'm about to change it up. Mm -hmm. Mix it up. <laughs> so I'm using a like, wow, this edge. <laughs> I'm using a little bit of this lighter. Yeah, it's gone. This is a yellow okra or like a lighter brown, uh, and I'm going to use that to kind of indicate the color of the ginger beer because it was kind of like golden, sparkly. I'm just going to outline these ice cubes a little bit. I'm gonna clean off my brush and now I'm just gonna use my brush to kind of smooth out or like blend in some of these lines. So for the most part, these uh, blank areas inside of my ice cubes, they are dry. If it happens that you added, say like, you know, you added some water and it's all like became, I don't know, became, 
marked with watercolor, mm -hmm. you can just clean off your brush and you can lift off. You have to constantly, so I'm like wiping off the brush after every single time that I lift off. Essentially, we are removing some of the watercolor and kind of like erasing. This technique allows for really fun little highlights that you can add. So you could either like leave a highlight, like paint around it, or you can lift it off. It's just a matter of preference of like how, what would you like the style to look like? And let's see here at the top, I'm just gonna do a couple of light brush strokes just to kind of indicate, show that there's a beverage in here. I'm gonna clean off my brush again and I'm gonna use a little bit of green for the lime. So I want it a little bit darker here on the lime wedge, but then on the inside, I'm just dissolving, like uh, adding a, a droplet of water to make this green much lighter. And I'm just gonna do a couple of little extra, just a few random brush strokes to show uh, the pulp on the lime. All right, and then for the cherry, I'm going to mix in uh, kind of, oh, I'm probably gonna use this uh, Payne's Gray, one of my favorite colors. And, cause I think that the Maraschino cherry is kind of like a, a, I would say purple, right? It has a little yeah, bit of purple it's, in it's, it. It's almost black. It's almost, yeah. So you could even add a touch of purple into this. So you'll see like right now it looks super, super saturated and also kind of one dimensional because there's no, it's just one shade throughout. So I'm going to lift off just a little bit. Cause I, I want to show that, you know, there's a light source and it's hitting this cherry and it's given it some dimension. So a really easy way to do that is just lift off a little bit of color. All right, and then let's see, I'm gonna go back to my Payne's Gray, but I'm going to uh, dilute it with a ton of water. So I have, I'm just adding some droplets here so that it's fairly light. Oh, thank you. And then I'm using that to sketch or kind of go over the lines of the glass. And then I'll just add a, a, like an extra brush stroke inside just to kind of give the impression that the light is hitting, uh, the, the glass is showing through some of the light. So it's transparent, but there's a little bit, like there's a few little shadows in there. Uh, and then let's see, one more thing is adding like one of these dramatic cast shadows. And that's again, gonna use my, my gray here, and I'm just going to outline kind of a little like circular shape off to the side. And the reason why it's off to this side is that I've decided just randomly, because I'm a lefty and all my shadows, uh, all, all my light sources are on the right hand side. So, no, sorry, left hand side. <laughs> so the shadow, the cast shadow is on the right hand side. <laughs> All right, so now that we have this shadow, like right now it looks very very stark. You can see the edges of the line. So I'm gonna clean off my brush and going to soften, soften this line. So that way it looks more like a shadow, has that effect, so it's a little bit, has that diffused look to it. And let's see, and then finally, I uh, will use this yellow okra. It's like a, a lighter, warmer brown color to to do the little, what do you call this? Uh, cocktail skewer. skewer. Well, it's a cocktail toothpick, but yeah, it's a it's bigger, so it's technically a skewer. A skewer, yeah. So one more thing that we could do here uh, before we finish wrap up is you could always like wait for a little bit for your watercolor to dry and then 
kind of assess, like, do you want this to be more vibrant? Because watercolor will always dry a shade lighter than what it is when you're working with it. So if, for example, you're like, oh, I wish this was a little bit darker so that it could be more, you know, vibrant and stand I out more. I wish this was stormier. I wish this was stormier. <laughs> so then you can always go back into your color and just do another layer right on top. And you'll see here, like uh, my previous layer was almost dry. So it's kind of like you can have these little edges, but I'm gonna clean off my brush and I'm just going to kind of soften them and essentially like bring up some of this color towards the ice cube so that it has more of a like a kind of ombre transition, a much softer look and feel to it. All right. Is, is that the difference between this one and this one where this is made very quickly? Yeah. And then this was layers over time? Yeah, so I would say I definitely with this one, I think I did three layers. And one extra thing that uh, maybe you'll notice here, there's a little bit of a brown kind of um, like shadow, but it's essentially like from the picture that I was as I took a photo and I was like, oh, that looks cool. But it really is like the beverage is being reflected in the glass. So if, you know, if it was like orange and you'd have like a little orange line here. So I might, I might just add like a little bit, just a tiny, very thin brush stroke, but just like these little tiny details can like really Yeah, I think, I think it's a lot more than that little detail that separates the one on the well, left from the one I on the right. I did spend more time on, the, yeah, on that's, this one. That's but, what I'm saying. Yeah. Is that, that this, is, this is you yeah. going 15 minutes. Yes. This is like an hour or two plus yeah. a lot of all those little, little tiny details that separate the right, but I just want to show that you art. don't need to spend that much time. No, you, you, don't, just... you don't need to, but, but I'm also saying that you can get to this good. Yes, yes, absolutely. That's a, that's a gorgeous painting there on the right. I, I'm Thank very you. impressed. I like I like the, the ice cube. Did you did you erase the ice cube, the lines from the ice cube, or did uh, you free I them? actually, okay, very good observation, Dan. Great questions. <laughs> For this one, I just freehanded the ice cubes with the paint. Um, sometimes I, I like to do that if I don't want to see the really... I like it. Really... Uh, overpowering uh, pencil lines, but for the sake of the demo, I think it just helps to kind of, if, if you're oh, yeah. a beginner, it just helps to know where the ice cubes are so you can paint around them. Yeah, but I've literally painted- Cocktail pro at this point. I've yeah. painted hundreds of glasses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know where ice cubes are. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, um, thank you so much. Is, are we still? Yeah, we're still on. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Do we flip over now? Yeah, you can flip over. There we go. Boom. All right. Well, sweet friends, thank you so much for joining us. Move the microphone right in front of the camera. Oh, sorry. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> it's ASMR. Uh, we <laughs> hope you enjoy this cocktail. Honestly, I know there's quite a few, like more than a typical cocktail drink ingredients there's like five or something there's like a few little ones but it's worth it to like get all those ingredients together and make this because it's it's truly so delicious and it's great for a dry january yeah well i mean if you consider how much work goes into making rum yeah it's a lot easier yeah it's a lot easier yeah. than actually making rum yeah so yes yes so thank you so much for joining us we'll be back next week uh same time same place 7 p.m central and we'll have another mocktail next week which i'm excited about this one too yeah going back to consistency so Yay. we look forward to seeing you again yes thank you bye bye